Between 1760 and the end of the Civil War, there were 101 books written or dictated by people who once were slaves and then escaped to the North. And the only one that, that addresses the experience of a free man or woman in the North who was kidnapped into slavery in the South and then made it back to freedom in the North is Solomon Northup. Like many people, I hadn't heard of Solomon Northup, but one time in the 1990s, I went to the old Fort House Museum in Fort Edward, New York, and on the guided tour, they mentioned that Salma Northup and his wife had lived there in the 19th century, and that he had been kidnapped and become a slave, and then wrote a book afterwards. I've had a difficult time these past several years. It was originally published in 1853, before the Civil War, of course, and it's very interesting because his attention to detail in the book shows just how curious he was and what an intelligent person he was because he records every little detail that happened to him. No man writing in upstate New York could have fabricated this narrative. There is no justice in this slavery. If justice had been done, I never would have been here. When I had the book in my hand, I opened the page of the book, I couldn't put it down. It's an astonishing story of one man who holds on to his faith holds on to his humanity through the worst kind of experience one can think of, and it was something which I thought the world should know about. It was such an amazing discovery for me. Many people don't even realize that there were free Negroes at the time, but of course there were. And Solomon and his wife were part of that free black community. And Solomon's father, Mintus, was born a slave who earned his freedom and then accumulated enough land to get citizenship rights, the right to vote in the state of New York. So Solomon was born free. He was never a slave until he was kidnapped. I was a free man. I'm not a slave. After 1808, the importation of slaves from Africa into the United States had been banned by the federal government. That meant that the supply of slave labor was limited and therefore, places in the South that were just developing, that desperately needed labor, were willing to pay very high prices for slaves. And consequently, people with criminal minds would realize that if they could kidnap a free black person and get them into the South, they could make a lot of money. You're no free man. You're nothing but a Georgia runaway. Every free Negro in the United States knew that they had to carry their free papers. You have no right whatsoever to detain me. Resolve this. Produce your papers. Imagine that state of being. Days ago, I was with my family in my home. Now you tell me all is lost. Despite all the terrible things he experienced and that he saw, he's able to maintain his identity over all those years and to remember that somehow he is going to get home. 12 Years a Slave is the greatest realistic depiction of slavery. It's brilliantly rendered. It makes you feel it, breathe it, smell it, experience it, suffer under the weight of the burden of the vulnerabilities of slavery in a way that's not pornographic. And that's the strength of the film. You know, there's so many levels to this book and to the story. And for me, Solomon's book is a gift. It is a gift from the middle of the 19th century right into the present day. It's a story that speaks to these ongoing debates as we grapple with what it means, what human dignity and human respect really, really mean, and how do we apply that on any given day. It would be an unspeakable happiness to see my wife. <laughs>